So, what have we here? A real jumble of parts. Well look, this is going to be uh, the second video in my series of videos that I'm doing making a high powered torch. You might have seen my video put up uh, just recently testing some 100 watt LEDs. If you haven't seen it already, go take a look at that. But uh, yeah, th this is the first video that I'm going to start describing the parts that I'm going to put together. Now, most of these parts have been baked, steeled or borrowed. Um, in the main part, I suppose, that has been purchased has been the, uh, the LED. I've ordered a few other hardware parts which will go together to make the torch. Uh, mainly being, I'll just bring it into view, a piece of plastic PVC pipe. I'll turn it the right way around. This is just normal stormwater 90mm plastic tubing. And that will form the main body of the torch. The LED will be attached to this computer heatsink. Now this is a very common computer heatsink. Uh, you can hopefully find one of these. Uh, it's an Intel unit here. But if you can't then something similar will probably do. I'll be modifying these legs slightly so they can be uh, fitted inside the tube. And also modifying the front plate, plate uh, here so that we can mount the LED. Another part that I actually um, purchased is and uh, this is a lens and mount so this will create more of a spotlight rather than a floodlight um, so I'd like to experiment using this we've just got a metal surround a reflector and what I think is a plastic lens so I'll be using that on front of the LED the power it's going to come from 18650 batteries. Uh, where are the 18650 batteries going to come from? Well, they're going to come out of here. I've got uh, three Dell batteries here. I got them from my IT department. They've been given up as too weak. But uh, I'm hoping that I can get some useful life out of them. Let's see anyway. In terms of making the battery pack, I've decided on a configuration, which I'll go through quite soon. Uh, but the batteries are going to be held together with these 18650 holders, which you can also get very cheaply on eBay. You can either get single ones which plug together like uh, Lego, or you can indeed get ones, I think I've got some here, which are yeah, two together, so I've managed to sort of cobble a 3x3 three three matrix. Um, what else have we got here? We've got a power supply, so we need to drive the LED with the correct sort of power supply. So I've got one here which should be good enough for the 100 watt LED I'm going to use. Much smaller power supply, DC to DC converter to power the fan, which is just 12 volts. I'm just gonna run that at full speed. Of course, when it was in the computer, um, it would have been speed controlled and the speed would have been sensed on one of these wires. So I should be able to work out just to put 12 volts straight across couple of those terminals and have it running at uh, full speed all the time. Other parts we've got here, switch. I'm going to make the light adjustable with a 10k potentiometer to make sure I don't overcharge or over discharge the batteries. I'm going to use this little device here which has got some buzzers on it and I can connect using a wire to the battery pack that I'm going to make. But that'll all come very apparent. A little bit of hardware, some feet, and a, and a flashy handle to finish it off. So that's about it, really. Um, so yeah, the first thing I'd like to do, though, is get into building the battery itself. Now, before I did the video, I've sort of worked out that, and if I can use a short piece of this pipe, to demonstrate to you in front of the camera. I've got just a short piece here. Oh, there we go. Even inside. I can nicely get a 3x3 three three matrix of 18650s in there. So I can have nine batteries. Whoops. Nine batteries down inside there. Nine batteries isn't going to be enough for my needs though. And so I've decided to double up and go for 18 batteries. So there will be two sets of nine batteries 
in series. The series and parallel arrangement I'll, I'll go through a bit later and how to wire those all up. But yeah, I thought I'd do the battery pack first. So let's get the desk cleared of all the other stuff and let's concentrate on those batteries. So I've cleared the desktop up a bit and I've just got these laptop batteries to, to look at now. Now as I said these are from my IT department at work and they've been given back as uh, batteries which are sort of weak, can't hold charge, don't last very long. Uh, the batteries inside them, yeah I don't know how good they are going to be, I am going to test each one individually and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. In terms of getting into this pack though, there are loads of videos on YouTube as to how to get into these best. Some packs are different from others. General principles do apply though and I will just draw your attention to the safety. Look, the voltages here are not very high so you're not going to get electrocuted but the potential amperages are high and you can easily short circuit something, melt a battery, melt your finger, whatever. Um, so do be careful put on some gloves. As soon as you are into the pack then I would suggest that you try and cut wires as soon as you possibly can and that will at least cut down the number of cells that are in series um, and yeah just, just get those batteries out with the, the minimum fuss. It does take a little while, it does take a little bit of brute force um, but yeah anyway so let's have a go at getting into one of these. Now I do know that sometimes taking off a label, here we go, can be quite revealing. So see using a blade towards him but just gently. So immediately you can see that we have six cells inside this unit and I have opened one of these before and so I know that if I chop these two ribs here uh, or even just grab hold of it, yes, they come away quite easily. And then what I find with these, being very careful now, just at this end here, just to try and break this webbing. Trying not to damage in fact, what I'll probably do is let me just take it off right in the middle here. And then you can start to see what's happening. So, pretty quickly, we're in. And as I said, you, you can be a bit brutal with these and pull that off. Choices from where you go from here are um, not very varied. Sorry I'm using this away from you, but you can see the sort of technique. Just trying to really um, damage, the, deliberately damage the casing and flexing it with your fingers as much as you reasonably can to tear away. And I should have put some gloves on, shouldn't I? But I have done this a number of times before and um, I haven't come across it yet. I have though dug some hard bits of plastic into my fingers which can be a little bit painful. So you see I've nearly got that out but just taking uh, just slip there. Give this a bit more of a clip. Okay. So I'm just going to get straight in there and I can see a wire coming off the battery. So I've got that one. Remove that one. there. So apart from the batteries being obviously connected to each other, they're not really connected. And there we go. 
So this is complete junk. There is a printed circuit board in there, and that's got the memory of the um, of what duty the actual battery pack went through. It's got the charging circuits and the protection circuits. We don't need that. We have harvested six batteries. What I suggest you do then is you just carefully separate those out. And now we're down to, I guess, a maximum of 3.7 volts for each pair of cells in parallel as they are at the moment. So this battery pack, sorry, I probably should have shown you, it was um, three cells in series uh, with, with 2p, two in parallel. Um, now, where do we go from here? So I want these cells to be individual. Some people do leave them as, as pairs, but in this battery pack that I'm going to build, I want to test them all individual, individually, sorry. And so what I'm going to do here is just peel that strip, yeah? Now you will be left with some little sharp tips there. Um, but I do find this peeling method, but like an old tin can, maybe the old spam tin cans, do you remember those? Um, oh really, I'm showing my age, aren't I? I should really be using some pliers rather than these rather nice snips. Um, let's get into there, pop that off, and then just roll that the back way. So you can see maybe on the camera there's a little bit of deformation even with me peeling here. But I'm just trying to keep that deformation to a minimum. Um, because it's not, the cell walls are not very thick and you can damage them. They've just been fairly gentle. So I'm going to stop the video there. The rest is clean up. This has got some sort of hard chalky material, so I just tend to use my fingernails on that. Some sellotape on there, which I remove. Um, and we'll move on to the next stage when I've cleaned everything up. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I've cleaned up the six cells. It took around about five to ten minutes for all six. I've also removed the little metallic spurs by using a Dremel just very, very gently over the end there. So they're ready for the first test that I want to do. Oh, just before I go on, yes, looking at what type of cell this is, it's a Samsung cell. So originally it was in, it was a tip-top quality cell. The 28 there at the end of the part number denotes 2,800 milliamp hours or 2.8 amp hours. That was its original capacity. It'll be interesting to see what they are now. Um, but the first test I want to do is just a simple voltage test with the meter here. So what have we got? 4.026. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note of that. Probably at the top here. 4.026. And just do that for the remaining six cells. So we've got one pair there. I think it was this pair. Oops, let's have a look. Yeah. Which is just a little bit lower. Yeah, 4.01. So I'm saying it's like it's, like, it's actually so close. I'm looking at too many uh, significant, or rather insignificant figures. So these are 4.02. I'm not too sure whether I'm bother why I'm bothering to do even the third figure here. What, what does that tell me? Not a great deal. Um, 
If any of these cells were under 3 volts, I might have some concern because lithium cells don't like to be stored or left uh, in such a state at such a low voltage. If one or two of them were very high voltage, much, much less likely, but um, yeah, that would be bad too. And clearly all the cells are still working, none of them are short circuit. So yeah, I think we can move on to the next stage. And the next stage, I do like to do a resistance check. And I can do that with this meter that I've got here. Or rather, this is a, a charger discharger. If you're not familiar with it, this is the Opus BTC3100. I think I've got version 2.2 um, here. I think it says down here, so it's one of the later versions. And if we pop the cell in, we can change the mode and we can ask it to do a quick test. Now I've got my hand and I'm really tightly holding onto the cell and pushing the contacts against each other. And that's 93 milliamps. Oh sorry, I took it out probably too quickly. I'm just going to make a note on the bottom of the cell of its resistance. What I found when making these measurements is that if you put the battery in and just press uh, it'll do the quick test now that it's on that mode. You tend to get quite varying results, and I think that must be to do with the resistance on the ends of the cell. So what I tend to do now, as I just demonstrated, is to put it in and then hold, and then hopefully I'm only testing the resistance of the cell itself and not of either of the two end pieces. So we've got 116 for that. So I'll go through and finish those and mark them up. And then what I'll be doing is I'll uh, show you what I'm going to do in terms of charging. Okay, so those six are now done and they're all around the sort of 100, 115, 113 uh, mark. So quite low. Um, what would I do if it was really high? I'd still go ahead and do a charge discharge test on it to see what the capacity is. But yeah, if it's up in the two to 300 range, I start to get concerned about yeah, what's happening with the chemistry inside the battery. Um, the lower the better in this case, as far as I'm concerned. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just remove the power for a second. I'm going to pop four batteries in. And at 4 volts, these are fairly well charged. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up to do go through the modes here. We've got charge, discharge, discharge, refresh, charge, test. So I'm going to leave it on charge, test. I'm going to leave it on 500 milliamps. I'm not in any rush. I'll just leave these overnight. And what the charger is now going to do it's going to charge the batteries to the full, discharge them until they're empty, and then it's going to recharge them back to full. And when it's finished that cycle, it will tell me on the screen here what the uh, capacity of each of the cells uh, was. So yeah, look, that's going to take several hours, so we'll come back when that's finished. Just a quick shot showing it uh, a few hours in. Um, let me just check on this. Just a quick shot here of it a few hours in. It's uh, charged all the batteries up. It's now into the discharge phase. It's been discharging for half an hour on these two batteries, just less than half an hour on these two. Um, it's discharging at 500 milliamps or there or thereabouts. And the current cell voltages are displayed there. So, and we won't see any values for milliamp hours until it's done uh, the full cycle.
So here we are with the units now finished, it's showing full and then flashing between the capacities of each of the batteries. Not very good particularly, one and a half amp hours uh, just over, but never mind, um, on to the next set. So here's the uh, cells that I've harvested from those laptop batteries, I actually ended up uh, unpacking six batteries. They were all Dell batteries, they're all nominally 11.1 volts uh, and 60 watt hour batteries. But as you can see, the cells within these batteries are actually from different manufacturers. They should be around about the same uh, capacity because of course uh, the battery itself was rated 60 watt hours. But uh, what we're left with uh, are six groups of batteries and indeed uh, it's a fairly typical haul is this. We've got some batteries down here which are quite low in capacity, between 11 and 1200 really. The next uh, ones up here are a little bit higher, 10 to 14, there's a couple of outliers here in that pack. And we've got these uh, purpley blue ones at 15, a um, bit of a mixture pack here, yeah. some at 1100, 1300, 1500, 1600, the top one there. These two, not too bad, 1900 to 2046, 1900 to 2168. Now, seeing as I'm building a torch, I'm, I'm really going to be looking for as, as much sort of charge density as I can because I'm, you know, these batteries have to be packed inside the tube, and I want the longest running torch that I can reasonably get from these free batteries. So in fact, um, I've decided not to use any of these. I've gone back to my stash of batteries that I've got sitting doing nothing at the moment. If I just push these out of the way. I mean, I will use those, but I will use them in a static application. I'm quite happy to use any battery that's over one amp hour. But this is my sort of current, uh, there's a bit of a stash here. And um, I've just had these on a storage charge sitting here for a few months, but I've got some here at two and a half, just over, 2.4, 2.4 in here, 2.3 and 2.1 I think in there, and so in 4, 8, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, that's the number of batteries that I need for this pack. So I think I'm actually going to use those, and as I say, save the ones I've just harvested for a static application. Okay. So what do we do to make this into a pack?